السلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد معدن الجود والكرم وآله وصحبه وبارك وسلم صلاة وسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليك وسلم Welcome you all to our sixth segment session on fiqh and bihamdi ta'ala we are in the blessed month of Ramadan Inshallah, whenever I'm here with you, I'll spend a couple of minutes at the beginning just to remind you the importance of the month of Ramadan and maybe share with you some practical sunnats which you can implement in your lives. Today, Inshallah, just a glimpse of the greatness of the month of Ramadan. Now, do you know there's a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam I'm going to write these things down on the board so students, if you want to uh, also write it down. The Prophet ﷺ, when he mentioned the reward of reading the Qur'an, he said with every letter of the Qur'an you read, you get 10 rewards. Now, the ulama, they have mentioned that this is when a person sits down to read the Qur'an outside Salah. Yes? So if you're reading, if you're reading Qur'an Sharif as you do in the month of Ramadan, you try to do the Khatam, and you sat down with the Mus'haf in your hand, the Qur'an in the hand, and you're reading the letters. So for every letter, you get... 10 rewards. Now in Salah is different. In Namaz, if you were to pray the Quran and if the Salah you're reading is Nafal, meaning you are sat down to pray the Salah, then for every letter of the Quran you read, once you sat down, for example, as I mentioned before, the method of praying Nafal Salah. Then for every letter of the Qur'an you read in Salah, you will be rewarded 50 rewards. So I'm going to put here, and sitting down to pay nafil namaz, whilst you sat down is half of the reward. So now, if you were to pray Salah in standing position, then for every letter of the Qur'an that you read in Salah, in Namaz, for every letter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you 100 rewards, subhanallah. So imagine, yes, you're you praying salah stand in standing position. Alhamdu, alif, lam, ha, mim, dal, five letters. So in standing position, when you read just the word alhamdu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already given you 500 rewards. Now, the beauty of Ramadan is that every fard act, which you carry out in month of Ramadan, the rewards are multiplied 70 times. So in month of Ramadan, the fard ibadah so for example, the five daily prayers, you do fasting, and then zakat, any fard act you do in month of Ramadan, 
the reward of that act is multiplied 70 times. Okay. Now, if you were to do miswak, now it's recommended in month of Ramadan, rather any day throughout the year, it is one of the most beloved sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And I'm going to explain to you the method of miswak in a, in a while. So if you were to do miswak before wudu, and you rinse your mouth thoroughly, and then you pray your first salah in the month of Ramadan in standing position. So when you do miswak or siwak, again the reward of your namaz is multiplied 70 times. So now if you were to combine the rewards, you're praying, for example, you'll be praying Salatul Asr and you did siwak and it's full salah. That means for every letter of the Quran that you read in Ramadan, in first salah, the reward, so it's 100 times 70 times 70. Kine hue? Hundred forty nine thousand rewards for every single letter of the Quran that you read in the month of Ramadan. And those who listen to the Quran, their rewards is multiplied twice. So understand the beauty and the greatness of the month of Ramadan. That is why you should try and read as much of the Quran as you can in the month of Ramadan. Now, talking about miswak, siwak. Now, as you heard before, and probably heard it and read it somewhere else in the books of fiqh and books of sunnah, uh, one of the most beloved uh, sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is miswak. Now, I do recommend all of you to buy one, to keep one, and to use one. Not only the rewards will be multiplied 70 times when you pray salah, but also as the hadith states, you will gain the rida of Allah, the happiness, the delight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. And do you know the last thing the Prophet sallallahu did before he left this world? Did you know? Which act he carried out before he left this world? He was in the lap of Sayyidatuna Ummul Mu'mineen Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa with his eyes indicated to Sayyid Ummul Mu'mineen that he wanted siwak, miswak. So Ummul Mu'mineen Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha she took one of the siwak, she, she chewed it with her own saliva. And gave it to Rasulullah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he began to rub his teeth. And in this state, his ruh left his blessed body, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you understand the greatness of miswak and how many of us, we neglect the small things in our life. Now, miswak, the maximum uh, length should be of one hand span. Okay. And obviously, uh, in the state of fasting, you're not allowed to drink the juice that comes off the siwak or eat the, uh, the bit of uh, wood that comes off. So you have to be very careful. So you chew the top, uh, wash it off, and then what is the method is you keep the thumb uh, at the front. And then three fingers at the top and the little finger at the bottom like this. This is... So even if you don't have miswak, if you have a toothbrush, why don't you hold the toothbrush in this uh, manner? At least you're acting upon the sunnah when you are cleaning your teeth. Yes? So obviously in, in the toilet, you don't say bismillah. If you're outside in the toilet, uh, uh, but it's obviously you shouldn't do it in front of people outside. It's not good. But generally, um, when you do say work, you say bismillah rahman rahim And then top right, top left. Bottom right, bottom left, and then wash it. Again, top right, top left, bottom right, bottom left, then wash it. And last time, third time, top right, top left, 
bottom right, bottom left, wash it and keep it upright. This is the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. Inshallah, I would like to hear from you, the children, if any of you have started using miswak, rather even forget toothbrushes, just use the siwak. And if you want, you can, if, uh, at the time, after iftari or before suhoor, if you want to use a toothpaste, just put your toothpaste on your miswak. And inshallah, you see that within a few weeks, your teeth will become stronger. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq, inshallah. Now today, we shall be finishing off the last two fara'id of salah. The last two fard of salah. So we've done takbir tahlima, we've done qiyam, we've done qira'a, we've done rukur, we've done sujood. Now two more left. Hopefully we'll finish today and we'll start the wajibat of salah. The sixth fard of salah is qada or qada'i akhira. The last sitting position. The last sitting position before salam or in the sitting position in which you do salam is known as qada. Qada means sitting, akhira means last. So we tend to say qada'i akhira. So it is found. Okay, okay, so one, one of the, the folds of Salah. salah. So, so it is found, the sixth fold of Salah. So, so it is found to sit in the last sitting position for the duration of reciting Tashahud. Now in Qaida Akhira, it is wajib to recite the entire Tashahud. At-Tahiyyatu Lillahi wa Salawat wa Tayyibat. Until the end. This, this is wajib. wajib. And inshallah, today, today or next week, we will cover the wajibat of salah. And, and just, just remind you, if you, you do have, have any questions, questions uh, you, you can, can ask, ask the questions. questions. It's displayed on your screens. Or will be displayed on your screens. I've already received a couple of questions, inshallah, which I'm going to answer later on. Um, so, um, so it is wajib to recite the whole of the shahud, at tahiyyat entirety. If you were to miss one word of the shahud, you will be missing a wajib. And after the shahud, in the last sitting position, what do you pray? You pray du'ai, uh, du'ud Ibrahimiyya, as salat al-Ibrahimiyya, du'ud Ibrahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina, it's better to add Sayyidina. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim, wa ala Sayyidina Ibrahim, innaka hamil majid, until the end. And also du'ai ma'afura, du'a, which is mentioned in hadith, that is why it is called ma'afura, or it's been passed down from Athar. So any du'a, اللهم اغفر لي ولوالدي ولاستاذي ولجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات ورب اجعلني نقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي That is also permissible or any dua it is sunnah So even if you to miss out your namaz will be completed Now um, When you are in the tashahud position you be placing and inshallah, be moving at the middle of the room, inshallah, if Brother Hanif can move the camera shortly. Uh, you leave the fingers resting in a normal state. And then in At-Tahiyyat, we come to Shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Now when reading the Shahada, you make, you make a circle, a circle using, using the right, right hand by joining the thumb and the middle finger. finger. Like, like that. that. And, and on, on the, the word la, you lift the index, index finger, finger and on reaching illa law, straighten your hand. hand. And, and fingers back, back to the original state. state. Now, now I, I mentioned this yesterday in Aqidah lesson, lesson we were talking about shayateen and jinn. There's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu has mentioned the indication, ishara. When you do this in salah. The indication of the index finger is more severe upon the devil than a sharp weapon. Than a sword. Subhanallah. So.
So let me uh, show you. First and foremost, let me show you the, for men the method. I mentioned this last week, but I'm going to show you to you again today. The method of sitting in Qaeda. So when you sit down in Qaeda, okay, the Sunnah method is you raise your right foot and and um, you, uh, the toes are facing the Qibla and you sit on your left. This is for the men. If you can't sit, it's fine, but it's sunnah. It's better if you do. And for women, okay, having, having both the feet on the sides like this and keeping the bottom onto the ground, this is their method of sitting in qaida or between sujood as well, as we mentioned last week. Now, so in, um, in qaida position, you don't keep your fingers... Uh, or you don't indicate your fingers towards the ground like some people do like this rather the fingers should face towards the Qibla so keep them on your thighs close to your uh, kneecaps and then when you read At-Tahiyyat At-Tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibat Assalamu alayka ayyuhal nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin Ashhadu Allah And then when you come to La So when you start praying Ashhadu You start making the circle Ashhadu Allah Ilaha And then Illa Allah Accept Allah When you say accept Allah You bring it down Ashhadu Allah Ilaha Illa Allah And then some people Wrongly This is wrong they keep their fingers like this. There is no, there is no reference to this. Rather, you have to put them back to their normal position. So, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allahu wa Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasulu. This is the shahud. And then we have Dur Ibrahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Until the end, and a dua, and then you do salam on both sides, and this will indicate the end of salah. If you do, do you have, have any, any questions, questions please, please um, you can, can ask, ask the questions, questions. Uh, uh, you, you can, can text, text us on our madrasa number. number. Right. Um, it, it is, is mustahab. mustahab. Now, what do you mean, Mustahab? You all should know what Mustab is. We covered this right at the beginning when we're talking about the terminology, the terms of fiqh. Mustahab, an act which is desirable. An act of, if you carry it out, you will be uh, rewarded. So it is Mustahab to look down upon the lap during Qaeda. So whether it's the first Qaeda in four rakats or three rakats or the last Qaeda position or whether you are sat between two uh, sujood, which is not jalsa, your eyesight you should look into your your lap okay now we we go to the next slide and um, we'll finish off the last fold of salah which is khuruj bi sunihi now listen to how i pronounce it khuruj Kharaj, khuruj, ya khuruj. Khuruj means to go, get out, to come out. Yes? And in Tajweed, if you remember, we, we mentioned makhraj, khuruj, kharaj. Okay. Khuruj bi sun'ihi, to come out by one's action. You do an act by which you come out of the state of salah. Okay. So khuruj bi sun'ihi. To, to end salah is thought, otherwise, otherwise you're going to remain in, in salah forever. So, so you have, have to somehow indicate somehow that you have completed the prayer. Now this indication of the completion of the prayer is thought. Okay. Now, what do you do? You exit the prayer by an act that nullifies, that invalidates the prayer. 
So, so any act, act, for example, if you, if you, if you want to eat or drink or, or laugh or walk away or move your, your uh, chest away, away from Qibla, Qibla or, or you, you start, start talking, talking or you go, go to sleep, sleep. yes? yes. Any, any of these acts, acts you do indicates you have ended Salah. This, this is fault. fault. Yeah? yeah? So, so if you, you have, have a mouse bar in your pocket, pocket Subhanallah, I don't know why we're talking about food in Ramadan. Or, or you, you like, like uh, uh, galaxy. galaxy, okay, the galaxy, galaxy then. then. Or, or you, you like, like Snickers. Snickers, okay, yeah, Snickers, Snickers then. then. So, so any chocolate, chocolate you have. have. So, so after reading at tahiyat and then do Ibrahim, and then do Ma'thura. If someone was to start eating before Salam, if he was to eat his chocolate, that chocolate has made him come out of Salah, and so he has fulfilled the form. However, okay, to perform Salam is wajib. So if you were to Finish off salah, salah eating your mouth bar, you'll, you'll have, have to repeat, repeat the prayer because, because you miss a wajib. So, so don't, don't do that. that. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll just give you an example. example. So, so to indicate end of salah is fault, and in Sharia, what, what, what did Sharia, sharia choose to use as an indication of ending salah? They have used the sleep salah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So once is wajib. Now, now, in, in the, the words Assalamu Alaikum, the word Assalam is wajib, not Alaikum. Assalam is wajib, Alaikum is Sunnah. So if you say Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah, full is Sunnah. If you just say Assalamu Alaikum, Assalamu Alaikum, fine, but you will be missing out the Sunnah. So, how do you indicate, so if you can look carefully, how, how I uh, indicate the Salah. So you will be looking onto your shoulder. Now I'm going to ask you, you, if you're on your own, in the house, and you say, Assalamu Alaikum, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah is a phrase of greeting. Who are you greeting when there is no one visible in front of you? Then obviously, as, As we, we heard yesterday, yesterday and last week in our Aqeedah lesson, there are, are angels surrounding a believer, especially Kiram and Katibin. So, so when, when you do Salam, you indicate and you make an intention doing Salam to the angels. Um, and if you're with Jama'ah, if you're if you praying with Jama'ah at home, then you're doing Salam to those who are in the prayer with you. So, so turn, turn the face towards, towards the right with, with the first salam and you look onto your shoulder. Not look at who is at the end of the stuff and, and smile at him. Okay? okay. And, and some, some people, people have different ways of doing salam. salam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. indicate and then, and then left. left. Okay, okay there's, there's nothing, nothing like that, that in Sharia. Sharia. All you do, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You look onto your right shoulder, it's good for your eyes. For the, the muscles, muscles of your eyes. Uh, also, also what I mentioned, when, when you such that, look onto your, your nose, nostrils. It's, it's good for your eyes. eyes. Okay, you're making your, your eyes stronger. stronger. So, so look onto your, your shoulder. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So this is how you do salam in salah and how you indicate the end of salah. Okay. okay. And, and then, then you, you make dua after, after the prayers and you raise your hands. hands. Now, now what, what is, is the method of dua at the, the time of iftari? Okay. okay. Every, Every single day you have different, different ulama making dua. dua. Yes. yes. We, we don't even know how to raise our hands. hands. Okay. okay. Some, some of us do that. that. Some, some of us do this. Okay. Some of us, some of sisters, they cover their faces. I mean, I mean, I don't know why they need to cover their faces. Okay. okay. Remember, Remember, I mentioned this right at the beginning when we were talking about takbir ta tahrima. When, when you pray salah, our qibla is the Kaaba in Makkah al-Mukarramah. Therefore, the palms should face the qibla. But when, when you're making dua, now our qibla direction is the arsh of Allah. It's from the arsh of Allah that the angels, they are appointed to carry out certain duties. So when you raise your hands, raise them, they are close to your chest. You can, you can have, have it joined together, together. You, can you can have, have a gap, gap 
Or as in hadith, when you're so engrossed in, in du'as, the Prophet has mentioned in the hadith of Mubarakah sometimes, the Prophet would raise his hand toward the sky until the under arm would become visible. Okay, okay when, when you're so, so engrossed, you, he's beseeching the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're not asking for the rahmah to come closer. So you, you, you can you see my arms? Yeah, so, so they, they come, come again, again. Ah, it's fine. So, so, you're, so, so the, the, the arsh is the qibla, so when you're making dua, the, the palm should, should be facing the arsh, not onto your face, face not onto the ground, ground not to each, each other. other. Yes, we don't do this in dua. Okay, okay. But, but sometimes some people become emotional. Please, Allah, please forgive me. They do that. That's different. But generally, we're making dua. Okay, this is the method of making dua. And the sunnah is to keep in front of the chest and look down when you're making dua, not towards the sky. Allah has mentioned in one of the beautiful books on the ethics of dua. And also, uh, other uh, ulama mentioned, if whilst making dua, you're looking, looking towards the sky, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, forgive me, you shouldn't do that. Because, because there's, there's a possibility, possibility Allah will take away your eyesight. Allah, Allah will, will same with salah. salah. Okay, okay you shouldn't be looking up whilst praying salah. salah. Yes, yes when, when you are making dua, you are humbling yourself in front of Maliki or Middeen. Yes, you make dua in a very humble, dignified manner. You're begging, You're begging for his forgiveness, his, forgiveness, his mercy. mercy. You're, You're asking, asking Allah, Allah to fulfill your wishes and desires and supplications. Okay. So this is the method. And then after, so read the Rushali before, you read the Rushali after any dua. And also, when you make dua, understand what you are saying. What is the point of making dua when you don't even understand what you're trying to say? The essence of dua is to understand what you're trying to ask from Allah. Allahumma anta salam Oh Allah, you are salam. Wa minka salam From you is peace. Wa ilayka arji'u salam Peace returns back to you. Fahayyina rabbana bis salam Let us live in peace. Wa dakhilna jannata daru salam And let us, ent let us enter jannah, the, the abode of, the abode of salam, peace. Yes? Now, as I mentioned before, when making salam, uh, make the intention of greeting the muqtadi, the imam, if you are repaying with the jama'ah, fellow Muslims and the angels. So if the imam is on your right, you include the imam in your right hand side, salam. If the imam is on your left, so when you turn your head towards the left, you include the imam on the salam which you do on the left. Now remember please, this is very important. The muqtadi has to do salam as well. If you just move your head, you will not be coming out of salah. And then if you walk away, you'll have to repeat the prayer because you forgot to do salam. So in, in Muqtadi, the one who is behind the Imam, remember for Muqtadi, three things are very important. Now remember this golden rule. Okay? Just remember this. Three things very important for Muqtadi, not the rest, just three things. If the Muqtadi were to fulfill these three things, his salah will be valid, will be complete. Number one, takbir tahrima. If the Imam says, Allahu Akbar, the muqtadi, the follower, they also have to say Allah Akbar. So if you're doing jama'ah at home, okay, if the men, the children, the sisters, the mothers are reading jama'ah, they will also have to say Allahu Akbar. Unko bi Allahu Akbar kehna ye zaruri hai, wajib hai. So when the Imam says Allahu Akbar, you also need to say Allahu Akbar. Obviously, not Allah like an Imam. Uh, that's number one. Number two. Is obviously there's no qira'ah, and we mentioned takbir intiqal going to ruku, going to sujood, the tasbih or sunnah, but this is not wajib. What's wajib for muqtari? At tahiyyat. Okay, so at tahiyyat is very important, therefore, please make sure your tashahud is of top notch, yani is perfect. 
pronunciation. Not at-tayyat. What's at-tayyat? There's no such word as at-tayyat. It's at-tahiyyatu. Tahiyya, greetings. Lillah is for Allah. Was-salawatu wa tayyibat. All salutations and goodness is for Allah. So you should pronounce. And inshallah, uh, in, in Tajweed classes, we will try and not only we'll cover the surahs, Tomorrow, we'll try and cover tashahud whenever you get time, inshallah, we'll cover these important things. So, tashahud. So, takbir tahrima is important. Tashahud is important. And the last thing is salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If a muqtari behind imam, if he was to just do these three things and remain silent, quiet throughout his salah, his salah will be accepted. Okay. So, please remember that. Okay, now we have wajibat. I've only got 10 minutes. I think it's better if we do wajibat next week. I've got a couple of questions, inshallah, which um, uh, I would like to answer. I mean, if you do you have any questions, please, uh, you can text. And also, can I remind all of our viewers, our brothers, sisters, young and old, if you're watching on YouTube, please do not forget to subscribe to our channel and to press the bell button so every time we are online you will get uh, a notification on your phones and laptop ipads whatever you have on your devices and you can watch online yes so please uh, if you can uh, subscribe to our channel m and i media on youtube so one of the questions couple of questions uh where is the there is Okay. The question was a uh, question in witr three witr if you forgot to pray dua qunut what we need to do what do we need to do So the question is if in witr in salatul witr we should read in in in, in ramadan uh, in isha and in ramadan we tend to pray witr after tarawih Okay, so you pay the four farz, the two sunnats, okay, and the two nafal, and then the 20 rakas tarawi, and we try and keep witr at the end. It's better to pray witr close to suhu time if you can, uh, but if you're praying with jama'ah, it's recommended to pray with jama'ah, so keep it at the end. But if someone by mistake, if he was to, uh, was to pray the two sunnats, the two nafal, and then witr, and then tarawi at the end, it's absolutely fine. There's no harm. But the, uh, the order is recommended. Pray the two sunnahs and then taraweeh, the 20 rakas. It's 20, not 8, not 4, not 10, not 12, not 19 and a half. That you break wuzu and then you, oh, you've, okay, do you know what? I'm not going to, no. Okay, you have to pray all 20 rakats. G. So you have to be careful what you eat in iftari. Subhanallah. So the question was, if in witr namaz, if someone, and it's, it happens. And it's, it's funnier, it's, I know it's, it's, I shouldn't be really saying this, but sometimes, you know, when the Imam, okay, bitara, the people are behind the Imam, they pray 20 rakats, or they're tired, and Imam is in third rakat. So, in, in, how, what is the method of uh, Dua Kunut is, you read so in the third rakat, you pray Surah Fatiha, Asura, and then Allahu Akbar, and then you pray Dua Kunut. So sometimes, you're behind the Imam, okay, you're daydreaming or tired, so he prays uh, surah, his imam does Allah Akbar, and Muqtari, his eyes are closed, he goes into ruku. Allah subhanallah. And then he looks right and left and everyone is standing. And then he realizes the error he has made because he was not attentive in his prayer. Anyway, so in witr namaz, if you forget, it happens. Yes, it happens. If if in witr, in witr salah, sorry uh, brother Hanif, okay, in the third rakat, um, you read uh, a surah and then surah fati and a surah. Now you had to pray dua kunu, but by mistake, by error, you went into ruku, Allahu Akbar. And then you realize in ruku, after ruku, oh, I forgot dua kunu, dua kunu is wajib. Dua kunu is wajib, say ava karwanuhu. Okay, what do you do? Then... No problem, carry on with the namaz 
and last week and I do recommend to watch okay we mentioned uh, and I'm going to mention next week the method of Sajdeh So you do Sajdeh So at the end so to answer your question if someone was to miss Dua Kunut Allahumma inna nasta'inuka wa nasta'gfiruka again this very powerful Dua try to learn the meanings not learn at least know the meanings it's amazing that how powerful this dua is. That is why this dua is read in witr, in a wajib salah. It, this is the only dua in all the five daily prayers that this is the only time you make dua standing because the rest of the duas, okay, you pray before salam. So, uh, dua kunut, try and learn it. And if you forget it, if you go into ruku, all you carry on, don't stand back up. Carry on and then do Sadeh Sahu at the end. Now the question is, second uh, following question is, what if someone does not know Allahumma inna nasta'inuka wa nasta'ufiruka wa nu'umu bihi wa natawakkul alayk wa nuthnu alayka wa nuthnu alayka li khayr wa nashkuruka wa la nakfuruka wa nakhlawu wa natruku ma yafjuruk Yes, if someone doesn't know these words, and sometimes difficult, okay, um, then you can pray Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab an-nar If you even don't know that you can pray any dua any dua even if you just pray Allahumma gfir li Allahumma gfir li Allahumma gfir li oh Allah forgive me oh Allah forgive me oh Allah forgive me obviously in Arabic okay then uh, this will be sufficient your wajib will be fulfilled you have to wajib is what any dua you need to pray Okay, when you raise the hands. Okay, so for Dua Kunut again, same as Takbir Tahrima, you raise your hands up to your ears, towards the Qibla, and for women, up to the shoulders, and then fold your arms as you do, and then read Dua Kunut, and then go into Ruku and complete the prayer. Now, I'm going to give you. Okay, uh, uh, sisters, ask a question. Do women have to pay full 20 rakats of Tarawih? Yes, yes, yes. I don't know where this misconception has ar arise within our sisters and our women folk that they think, oh, we can half or we can pray eight. Sunnah Mu'akkada is all 20 rakats. Yes? So all 20 rakats of Sunnah Mu'akkada is emphasized Sunnah. And we mentioned about the importance of these types of Sunnah. It's not Sunnah Ghair Mu'akkada, it's optional. Okay, if you miss it, there's no harm. These 20 rakats, all 20 rakats are Sunnah Mu'akkada read in twos. And if a person makes a habit of missing them, he will become liable of the wrath of Allah. Okay, emphasize Sunnah. So yes, for sisters, uh, all 20 rakats are Sunnah Mu'akkada. I've got three minutes. If anyone wants to quickly ask a question, they can do so. So, do, I'm going to give you a wazifa. For your memory, Be before you pray with the namaz, okay, or you can do this after two rakat sunnah, before tarawih, or before witr. After you pray the two sunnats and two nafal of Isha, you pray Ya Shaykh Abdul Qadi Jilani 11 times with Durusha before and after. Okay, Ya Shaykh Abdul Qadi Jilani 11 times. As mentioned by the great Nasik Wali, Huzur Sar Kali Kala, Kala Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. So, Ya Shaykh Abdul Qadi Jilani, Kitni Bar, how many times? 11 times, Gyara Bar Paringe. Okay, inshallah Allah will make your memory strong. And this wazifa, Shaykh Abdul Qadi Jilani, inshallah, just mention his name of Ghospak, is a means of protection for many calamities. And after Witr, as Sadhu Sharia has mentioned in his Fatawa, uh, Fatawa Amjadiyya, that it is also an act of reward that after Witr Namaz, you pray these three uh, words Subhan al Malik al Quddus. Subhan al Malik al Quddus. And the last one, you extend the wow. Subhan al Malik al Quddus. 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 Yes, this is also recommended. And I forgot to mention 
Did you know? There is another place where in Salah you are allowed to pay Dudu Sharif. Did you know? I'm telling you today. In Witten Namaz. When after Dua Kunut, as we mentioned, it's better to pay Dudu before and after Dua. Yes? So after Dua Kunut, before Ruku, you can pray a short Dudu Sharif. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Sayyidina Maulana Muhammad wa sahabi wa barik wa sallam. Short Dudu Sharif and going to Ruku as mentioned in Bahari Sharia. Huzur Sadr Shah has mentioned this. Okay? It's better, better that you, before, after Dua Kunut, you pay Dudu Sharif. Inshallah, with the Barak of Dudu Sharif, your Dua Kunut will be accepted. And your homework as students, as parents, okay, as my brothers, sisters, go and look out. And read the, the meaning of the Dua'i Qunut. Uske ma'ani aap samjhe. Kya par rahe aap log. Yes. It's a beautiful Dua. Uh, okay. So please, um, uh, if you can, uh, learn the meaning. We'll stop at this inshallah. We'll pray to, to Dua. Dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq to pray our namaz correctly, on time, Fulfilling all the faraid, the wajibah, the sunnah, and mustahab, mustahabbat, inshallah. Tomorrow, uh, we have again from 6 o'clock. Uh, we apologize beforehand if there's a delay because, uh, because of technical issues we have sometimes have with Wi Fi and the slides and the laptop. So be patient, okay? We're trying to start on time, uh, but sometimes things are not in our hands. Uh, so tomorrow 6 until 7 o'clock, stay tuned, inshallah we'll be doing Tajweed, inshallah today after Salat al-Asr, inshallah Mawlana Muhammad Kaleem will be doing Tafsir of Surah Al-Rahman, a very beautiful Surah of the Quran, that rhymed isn't it, Surah Rahman, the beautiful Surah of Quran, in the month of Ramadan, Subhanallah. So I urge all of you to watch, have a break, don't have a Kit Kat, it's fasting. Uh, but inshallah, after, after Salatul Asr, half seven, yes, half seven inshallah, stay tuned on our Mohs Radio, on YouTube, please watch, make notes. Unfortunately, you're just watching as if we're here to entertain you, we're not here to entertain you, you're students of sacred knowledge and have that decency of making some notes. Okay, make some notes, it's important, it helps you to learn uh, ilm. Um, so we pray to dua, dua, may Allah give us the tawfiq. So after Asr today, so every day after Dhuhr, Mu'ala Kareem does dars after Dhuhr. After, before Asr, one hour before Asr, we have online classes. So Mondays we have Sirah, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I do uh, Aqeedah, Fiqh and Tajweed tomorrow. And Friday, uh, Muhammad Akil Bai, he does Akhlaq. On Saturday, inshallah, we have a talk show. And alhamdulillah, many of you uh, did uh, messages. It was very informative. It is because it's informal. We're talking about experiences. So inshallah, we have a very beautiful topic, which we're going to disclose tomorrow. So, uh, also on Sunday, uh, Shah Sab Said Samdani, uh, he does uh, dars on the prophetic character after Asr. So the programs are there for you. It's your a responsibility to tune in and to watch and increase your knowledge and dhikr of Allah. Whilst you're watching, keep a tasbih in the hand. Keep praying subhanallah, alhamdulillah, astaghfirullah. May Allah give you tawfiq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.